Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the web series of building AWS serverless web application. Uh, this is video 101 uh, in which I'm going to cover uh, what we are going to do as part of this web series. I am Aniket Thakur, I am AWS Certified Solutions Architect uh, and Developer. So let's go over the agenda for the video tutorial. So first we will go over uh, cloud deployment, a uh, brief history of how the cloud deployments have involved. Uh, then we will go over what is serverless, why should we use serverless. Uh, then we will see what are some of the prerequisites that you need to have before you go uh, ahead with this uh, video series. Uh, then we will look at what are we really trying to build here. Then we have a couple of videos in which this video series is divided into. You have uh, serverless for S3, serverless using Lambda, serverless using API Gateway, serverless uh, CI CD which is continuous integration and deployment and then we will see some of the service that might come under AWS serverless infrastructure but that will not be covered in our today's video session and finally we will see a classic example of AWS serverless infrastructure. So let's start with a brief history of cloud deployments. So before we had a concept of data centers and in data center, uh, the unit of scale is hardware. So when you want to add more servers to your environment, you would basically add more hardware uh, servers, hardware machineries in your data center. And that's how you scale and you abstract out the physical hosting environment, right? Then came uh, the IaaS, which is Infrastructure as a Service, uh, in which uh, operating system is the unit of scale. Now in IaaS, uh, you are given a bare machine and you, you need to take care of the operating system that is installed, all the servers that are installed on it and its maintenance. So if you take, for example, Google uh, App Compute Engine of Google Cloud or EC2 machine of AWS, those are uh, classic examples of infrastructure as a service and it obviously abstracts out the hardware, right? So you don't have to care about what hardware it uses internally, right? All you care is the operating system uh, that you install on top of it and servers and apps that you install. Then came uh, the PaaS, which is platform as a service where you don't have to bother about what OS, what hardware runs beneath the system. All you care about is the runtime. So for example, consider Elastic Beanstalk service of AWS or Google App Engine service provided by Google Cloud. So all you need to do is code and upload your code uh, to the engine's runtime and then the service will take care of scaling your code. And recently uh, there has come a concept of serverless where you do not care about runtime, the hardware, the operating system or any of it. All you do is provide it with the code that you want to run and the serverless service will take care of scaling uh, your code and making it fault tolerant. And we will see that in some time how it is achieved in case of AWS but the idea behind serverless is that it abstracts out the language runtime and you have function as the unit of scale. Right. So I'm not saying that data centers, uh, infrastructure as a service or platform as a service is outdated or no longer used. It definitely depends on your use case. Uh, it's just that serverless infrastructure is something that has come up recently and is very exciting because you really don't have to care about uh, anything else except your core business logic. Now let's come to what is serverless computing. So serverless computing, as I said before, allows you to run your application without thinking about servers, right? So there is no physical server, there's no hardware, there's no operating system. It's just your code that you deploy and the service takes care of scaling uh, the load and making it fault tolerant, right? So that's what serverless computing is. You don't have to worry about the servers. Uh, next thing that you want to know about serverless computing is that you can build them for nearly any type of application or backend service, right? So you don't have to worry whether the container is t uh, Tomcat or any other container that might be using, right? So as, as I mentioned before, uh, serverless uh, function is the unit of scaling. So the service will take care of scaling your function and making it fault tolerant so it's always available for you. So why use serverless computing? 
again uh, no server management like I said before there is no servers so you do not have to worry about maintaining servers uh, patching them up uh, so on and so forth flexible scaling uh, again you do not have to uh, predetermine what kind of load are you going to expect and put and deploy that many servers based on that your function will automatically scale as and when your load increases or decreases uh, the next thing that we need is high availability again you do not have to worry about uh, your servers being highly available deployed into multiple regions and stuff like that uh, the AWS serverless infrastructure automatically takes care of high availability for you so, so for example let's say you are getting thousand concurrent connections right in the normal scenario you would need to have a load balancer and then multiple servers behind it to uh, take care of that kind of scale but in case of serverless all of this is abstracted out to you so you don't have to worry about uh, scaling your infrastructure it is already handled for you no idle capacity now that's a classic example of uh, wasting your resources so sometimes it happens that you provision three servers behind a load balancer but actually you do need only two servers at the point uh, in time and the one server is just sitting idle uh, waiting for the load to increase and the resources are just wasted right so in serverless you do not have to worry about the servers that are provisioning like i said before uh, the infrastructure takes care of uh, scaling your uh, function and that's why uh, you only pay for the load that is actually coming to your web application and not uh, what you provision so now let's come to requisites that are required for you to follow uh, the next set of uh, videos in this video series first of all you need uh, an AWS account uh, it could be a free tire so that's fine but you need to have uh, AWS account you need to know uh, some basic knowledge of AWS services uh, I will try to cover as much as I can but uh, you still need to have some basic knowledge for example using IAM rules right which are required for services to work uh, then you need some knowledge of HTML JavaScript because that's how we will write our web app at least the UI part of web app and finally you need to know some amount of Node.js and that is how we will write our uh, AWS lambdas which are the basic unit of AWS serverless infrastructure so what are we building we are going to build a simple web application uh, that displays images stored on your cloud and for cloud I'm just using an AWS S3 bucket so let me show you what uh, it looks like so this is what it looks like uh, nothing fancy there's just a banner there's a get image list heading and there's a button which says fetch list and when you click on fetch list uh, this would actually go ahead and make a call to backend which is completely based on AWS serverless infrastructure and it will render some of the images over here right so this is the basic thing uh, that we are going to build uh, we will see all of the UI code how it is hosted uh, how does this URL come into picture what happens when you click on this button how does it go to the serverless infrastructure with the backend uh, retrieves the list of data and how does it render on the website right so going back to our presentation so that's what we will be building uh, the services that we are going to use uh, we are definitely going to use s3 so we'll use s3 for hosting our website uh, we will also use s3 for storing some of the images that we are going to show on the web app obviously we will need lambda so lambda is the basic unit of aws serverless infrastructure we will use uh, lambda service to scale our uh, application we will use API gateway to expose API's uh, that can be called from the UI part uh, then we would see how CloudWatch works in terms of uh, viewing logs if something goes wrong uh, we will have some part of IAM uh, for looking at the services and rules uh, that are required for uh, the serverless infrastructure uh, then the final part of the video series we will see uh, CI CD deployments which is a continuous integration and continuous continuous deployment and that would that would use code build code pipeline and code formation
next video we will co cover AWS serverless around S3 in which we will see uh, AWS S3 buckets we will talk about file permissions uh, we will see what HTML JavaScript code is required to host our website and we will finally see how static website hosting works and uh, that would be uh, video lecture number two uh, in 103 we will see how AWS Lambda works we will see uh, how, how Lambda configurations are done we will see what is Lambda we will see how to use it uh, we will also see uh, the actual code that goes uh, behind Lambda to get the files from S3. Uh, in the next video, uh, which will be around API Gateway, we will see how API Gateway works, how do we create endpoints, how do we create APIs, resources, methods, <laughs> how does cars work, uh, how do we check logs using uh, CloudWatch logs, and how do we integrate API Gateway with the Lambda that we created uh, in the, one of the previous uh, video series. Finally, we would take a look at AWS serverless around uh, continuous integration and continuous deployment. And this is to show you how, when you commit anything into your GitHub repository, how CI CD uh, code pipeline of AWS picks up your changes, automatically builds and deploys all of your changes. Uh, this would be mainly around Lambda and it will get deployed uh, into your AWS environment and it is ready for you to use. Uh, what will not be covered, uh, AWS Cognito, now this is a service that you can use to maintain your user pool, uh, do authentication and stuff. Uh, again, I wanted to keep it very simple, so I'll not be covering this. Uh, the next thing that I'm not gonna cover is uh, the storage. So this web app is completely uh, without storage. So I'm not going to use RDS, which is relational database, or DynamoDB, which is NoSQL database. The two next things that I will not be using or covering is CloudWatch events and step functions. Now these are kind of important from AWS serverless perspective. Uh, so CloudWatch events you can think of as cron jobs, and step functions you can think of as multiple lambdas that are run based on conditions. So uh, these I would not be covering in this particular video series, uh, but probably sometime uh, in the future. Uh, so let's come to a classic example of how uh, AWS serverless architecture would work. So uh, if you see on the left hand side, this is your machine. So you first make a call to AWS Cognito service to uh, log in, uh, in as a user. And once uh, you are authenticated, you would go and access the S3 static website that is hosted on Amazon S3. And once that is done, uh, your website can internally make an API call to API Gateway. And the API Gateway would internally uh, invoke a Lambda. And uh, if needed, you can uh, use a database. It could be an, a, a DynamoDB, which is a NoSQL database, or it could be a relational database like MySQL, uh, which you can use as storage. So Lambda would interact with that database to save and get the data from the persistent storage and uh, send it back to your website, right? So like I said before, we will not be using AWS Cognito and any kind of storage uh, for our serverless uh, demo. We would be using S3 for static website hosting. We would be using API Gateway to create APIs and we would be using AWS Lambda to uh, write our actual backend uh, service logic. So uh, thank you, uh, stay tuned to uh, the next video uh, that will be coming out next week.